What, I, what I'm really arguing in the piece is America is a sufficiently grown-up and mature and courageous culture to take the risk of admitting this historian to the canon of those who we can read and review and discuss for ourselves as well. Let me hear from Eric. Yes, sir. Uh, Christopher argues that David Irving is one of the necessary, three or four necessary historians of the Third Reich. So well, let's understand who we're talking about here. A popular historian familiar with documents, who's unearthed new documents every time he's done a research project, who contends, among other things, that the notion of a coherent scheme to annihilate European Jewry is a myth, that Hitler didn't know about the Holocaust, that Anne Frank's diary was a hoax, that there were no gas chambers at Auschwitz, that the Holocaust itself as a phenomenon, the decision to murder European Jewry en masse, is open to doubt. Christopher, in his article, uh, makes something of a deal about the fact that Irving never said the Holocaust was a hoax. That's true. He said it was open to doubt. I wonder what you're saying when you say this is one of the necessary historians of the period. The fact that he unearths interesting documents? Eric, just... if I may call you that, why, won't, why can't we make this simple and easy? Simply say that what you and I have read should be available to any other American to read. It should be available, and it will be available. The question is, uh, does a publishing house have any kind of moral obligation to lend its imprimatur to a book that, in fact, the chairman of St. Martin's called effectively anti-Semitic? Why did he call it effectively 